your mercies each day. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. Glory to you. When we cast our cares, our burdens to stay, and we just rejoice in who you are. Thank you for taking care of us, Father God. Thank you for your blessings today. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
and you're working all things out for good. And Lord God, if there's an individual today who's suffering from things at the job, the workplace, relationships, Father God, that today, may they see and recognize that you are in the midst of that storm, oh Jesus. Financially, Father God, there are individuals here today that need, need a mighty touch financially, Father God. Lord, open their mind to new ideas, Father God. Plant them, Father God, where they need to be planted. And uproot them for where, where they need uprooted, Father God, this day. But Father God, remind them that you are with them. And Father God, today we praise you. We praise you for the confidence that we can have in knowing you never leave us, you never forsake us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you today for encouraging our hearts. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. How awesome to know whether it's the just a small bump in the road or if it's the largest obstacle we have ever faced. We're, we don't face it alone because Jesus is right by our side. Amen? Amen. When you came in, you should have received a bulletin. And if you open that up, in the very center are several announcements that we would like to draw your attention to. Um, the first thing that we want to draw your attention to is one that is not even in here. So... Um, <laughs> Coming up next week, we are doing the Title I dinner for Springfield School, and we need some cookies. So if you like to bake, um, we're asking several individuals, if, if they will, bake three or four dozen cookies or so, and we need you to bring those in just next Sunday. If you could bring those in, is Brenda in here? There she is. You can see Brenda right back there by the door. If you would uh, like to commit to doing that, just let her know so that she can be expecting how many cookies will be coming in uh, for, for that. Also, we have our harvest party and chili cook-off coming up. How many of you have ever had your name in lights? We almost had one. Nobody had your name in lights. Have you ever had your name um, on a sign or a billboard? Okay, a few more. Okay. Have you ever had your name on a plaque? Anybody ever had? Okay, well, you know what? For those of you who didn't raise your hand, this is your opportunity. Because the winner, the number one, the champion chili cooker, is going to get their name on a plaque in a prestigious location in our dining area. So we need some people to sign up and participate in the chili cook-off. Even if your special someone only tells you your chili skills are so-so, bring your skills here. And that is, that is going to be on Sunday, October 27th, next Sunday evening. Share your skills with us, all right? So there is a sign-up sheet out in the lobby. Um, go ahead and put your name down for that because we want several to be able to taste, to be, to be in the competition, all right? Um, we've got our clothing giveaway coming up, and there's details on when to bring those items in. Um, our new member class on Wednesday, November 6th. If you are, would like to become an official member, a voting member here at Springfield Assembly of God, we encourage you to come to this class. This is what we would like for you to attend uh, just so we can know a little bit more about you and you can know more about us. Um, and I think that takes care of all of our... Oh, one more. I don't want to skip this one. We have our, our ladies, as you will see that notice in the bulletin also, our ladies are making apple butter. And if you would like to get it before it's gone... We have got sign-up sheets out in the lobby if you would like to pre-order, especially if you want a quantity, like if you want a dozen jars or something such as that or six or whatever. You can just sign up here, and we will make sure to reserve you some because, you know, if you don't get in there quick enough, they just, when, when they're gone, they're gone. Um, also, if you, if you know some people, uh, if you work with people who may be interesting, interested in buying some, or if you have neighbors you know might want some, there are extra sheets available out in the lobby underneath the sign-up sheet that you can take with you and take orders for us, and that would just be a lovely thing too. Amen. This morning, uh, typically October um, is recognized as uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but we... 
many of us know we've had um, cancer affect us in our, in our own families and in our friends and different ways, loved ones, co-workers. And so today we want to um, just take a few moments and just give special honor to those who have had cancer of any kind this morning. If you are in the middle of the battle, if you are currently fighting cancer, or if you are an overcomer and you have come through it, and you have gotten the all clear report, we would like to honor you this morning. So if you have had cancer, or if you have, uh, have it right now, or if you are, have already won, won the battle, we would like to have you all come up this morning, and we just want to have a brief prayer with you this morning and encourage you this morning. So, so those who are here, Great job. amen. <laughs> come on forward. Yes. Our God is faithful. You can turn around and, and face, face, our, face our audience this morning so they can see your lovely faces. And each one of these up here this morning, I'm sure, would tell you that through it all, God was there. There is never a moment that we walk alone because Christ is with us and in the family of God, our brothers and sisters in Christ are with us as well. So we, we just want to, to say a prayer of blessing over those this morning, those who are still in the battle and those who have already come through it. Let's just bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would hold us close in this process of battling, Lord. In those times of uncertainty, whether it's in the beginning of the process, the middle, or near the conclusion, remind us of your promises when we're feeling overwhelmed. Whisper words of love when I feel alone. When I am weary, help me lie down in peace and find true rest. Give all who care for us great waves of wisdom. Lead me through every step of this journey, singing songs of hope over my life. Quiet my soul as I face treatments. Come quiet any fears that may come and fill my heart and mind with your everlasting love, chasing away all doubt and all fear. And when I receive the long-awaited news of a clean bill of health, Remind me how you walked beside me each day, holding me close right in the palm of your hand, Lord. You are not only our help, our hope, and our peace, but you are also our healing. And we look to you always for all things. Amen. Amen. Let's give them another round of applause. And before you leave, before you leave the front, we're going to ask each one of you if you would just please help yourself to one of these lovely carnations this morning. These are here for you, so, so please help yourself to a carnation right now, this very second. <laughs> Amen. We have... We have living, walking, breathing testimonies around us every day, don't we? Amen. If we could have our ushers uh, go ahead and come forward at this time, we're going to um, take up our first fruits and offerings this morning. And we are going to be blessed by a special rendition of a musical favorite by our very own Josh this morning.
words or that prayer. I don't know about you, but I sometimes stand in awe when people pray, sincere prayers. We have some amazing prayer warriors in this church. Of course, Pastor Ray, Pastor Melissa, is eloquent when they pray. Sister Lisa has a beautiful prayer. Always, always. I and Gail has always been such a prayer warrior. There have been many times in my past with even Bob and Gerald, whenever you guys would pray when I was little, I just always felt that there was such sincerity in their prayers. But I don't know about you, there are times I'm like, man, I wish I prayed like that. Or I wish the words would come to me the way it comes you know, to them. There are moments, though, in our lives whenever you just don't have the words. You know that maybe the burden is too heavy. The moment is just so amazing and wonderful. You just don't have the words. And I think, Lord, I don't know what to say. But then I'm reminded in the scripture that he taught his disciples. In fact, if you go to um, Luke 11, thank you, Pastor. Luke 11, it says, beginning in verse 1, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Could you imagine being a disciple, listening to the Son of God pray? Could you imagine the beautiful words, the eloquence in his voice, the passion? And look, it's just hard to even imagine. But his disciples wanted to know, how do we pray for him? And he says, I'm a Lisa and Alan, amen. Beautiful pastor with our children, 
that they're working right now, answering the call of God in her life, and blessing our children, amen, with His words of truth. So, we have a lot to celebrate here at this church, amen. amen. We have a lot to celebrate in our world that we have committed individuals that are doing what God has called them to do, and that's to serve. So thank you so much, Llewellyn, for serving us in the way that you do. And we do want to honor you next week. So thank you. Blessings to you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, let's clap for it. <laughs> we have a few songs yet, so let's just continue to prepare our hearts for this amazing experience that you're about to receive. Amen. Amen. We believe in you, Lord. We believe in all that your word says that you are. We believe that you are the healer, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, and our soon coming king.
thank you, Father God, that you are a God of truth, that you reveal your truth in extraordinary ways. And we thank you for your word today that we stand upon. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, church, whatever care or lie that devil's told you, no matter how old you are, how young you are today, you matter. You matter to the king. He created you for a purpose that only you can fulfill. And if you continually allow the enemy to play games with your mind, you may just miss out on the grand things that he has in store for you. So today, I encourage you, lay, lay all cares, all burdens, all shades of bondage at his feet this day and come to his altar of grace. Thank you, Jesus.
you can't father. Encourage our heart. Renew our mind, Lord God, so that our focus, our attention is completely on you in serving God. We thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Father, we stand in your presence today. Lord, you are in this place. And we stand as needy people. Father, I know that there are bodies that need to be touched today. Lord, there are hearts and minds that seek direction and wisdom for decisions. Lord, I know that there are relationships that are, that are strained and need your help. God, we stand in your presence today asking, asking for your touch. God, I pray that you would touch those bodies that are infirmed, those, those aches and pains, those joints that don't function properly. Lord, that your healing power would move even now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for those, those hearts that are, are distressed, those minds that are burdened with decisions, Father. Do I do this? Do I do that? God, I pray that you would speak clearly through the noise. Speak clearly through the distractions. Lord, that you would speak wisdom. Lord, that you would open the doors that need to be opened. That you would close the doors that need to be closed. That you would block the paths that need to be blocked. God, I pray for relationships, Lord. That are stressed, that are strained. Lord, that even to us may appear broken. But God, you are the giver of life. You are the restorer of all things. And Lord, in, in, even in our eyes, Lord, where it seems that there is no hope, you bring hope. God, breathe new life into those relationships. Father, you said that you would turn the hearts of the Son toward the Father and the hearts of the fathers toward the sons. Do it again. Do it again in Jesus' name. God, long before you created the church, you created family, God. You brought Adam and Eve together, Lord, to be a, a family unit. God, I pray that you would bring, breathe new life into our families today. May the hearts of husbands be turned once again to their wives. May the hearts of wives be turned once again to their husbands. Breathe new life. Parents to children. Grandparents to grandchildren. Lord, restore. Restore. Restore in Jesus' name. God, I pray for those, Lord, who feel there is no hope. Lord, that they, they get up in the morning, they go through the motions. They've lived life long enough. They've done it, Lord. They, 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 they don't even have to think about it, God. But, Lord, to them, Lord, they're, they're trapped in hopelessness. There seems to be no end. God, I pray that you would speak to those hearts now. That you would bring hope to the hopeless. Jesus. Ah, oh, Jesus. Say that name with me. 
Jesus. Say it again. I want you to take 30 seconds and tell the Lord what you're facing in your life right now. I want you to take 30 seconds and I just want you to say the name Jesus. Speak the name of Jesus over that issue, over that problem, over what you're facing in your life right now. God, we've spoken our issues, we've spoken our problems, we've spoken the, the things that we face in our life, but God, we have spoken the name of Jesus over those things. That name that is above all names. Lord, I declare that, that Jesus is greater than my problem. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your touch and for your presence. Lord, I thank you for your restoration, for the life-giving power of, of Holy Spirit. God, I pray that you would complete the work that you started today. And Father, as we declare your word in this place, may our hearts be open to receive what you have for us this day. For God, it is a new day and we need a new word from you, God. We need fresh today. Lord, we want, don't want yesterday's stale old bread. God, give us something new today. Speak to us. Refresh us. Father, breathe upon us today. Oh, well, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Put your hands together as you're being, give God praise this morning. God bless you, man. Bless you, If you looked in your bulletin this morning, you may see a strange title. You're probably looking at frogs and wonder what in the world you've gotten yourself into today. And if, if you have your copy of, of God's Word, take it and turn to Exodus in the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 8. Exodus chapter 8. We're going to be talking about a particular plague that's in the Old Testament for just, just a few moments. It's not one of the ones that we normally talk about. If, you, if, if you've seen the movie about the plagues, uh, that one that char stars Charlton Heston and Yul Brenner, you know, uh, we're, we're familiar with the darkness, we're familiar with the, the, the disease that comes and all the cattle start dying, we're familiar with the hail that comes, uh, we're familiar with the, uh, the flies you know, that we're all found in the land of Gosh or in the land of Egypt, but not in the land of Goshen. Sometimes we skip over this frog thing. And I think it's because uh, 
they're frogs. How many like frogs? Not frog legs, just frogs. All right, how many like frog legs? All right. It's kind of, a, yeah, all right, mixed. I think it's the same hands, but all right. First service was like two people like frogs, but then everybody else raised their hand when it comes to frog legs. I don't understand how, if you like frog legs, you should like the frogs, right? I mean, that makes, I don't know. Anyway, look at these verses, beginning with, with, with uh, verse 1 in chapter 8 of the book of Exodus. Then the Lord, Yahweh, said to Moses, go into Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Now, if you remember from the movie, you remember Charlton Heston goes in, he goes in 10 times, right, and asks Pharaoh to let the people go. Now, this is, this is number two. The frogs are, the number, are, are, uh, are number two. It's the second plague that comes. Verse 2, but if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will plague all your country with frogs. Now, verse 3. Hopefully you have a, a strong stomach here. The word of God gets, it gets a little, look at this. The Nile shall swarm with frogs that shall come up into your house and into your bedroom and on your bed. You guys are quiet compared to first service, yeah. And, uh, and into the houses of your servants and your people and into your ovens and your kneading bowls. You guys are okay because you liked frogs, I guess. Maybe you're okay with frogs in your bed. I don't know. The frogs shall come up on you and on your people and all your servants. Verse 5. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the rivers, over the canals, over the pools, and make frogs come upon. Look what it says. Make frogs come upon the land of Egypt. Verse 6. Aaron stretches out his hand, right, over the waters of, the, of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land. All right, so here's what's going on, right? Aaron takes his rod, stands, and, 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 and we're, we're used to seeing Charlton Heston standing on the rock, right, raising the rod, and the waters part. Aaron raises his rod, and out of the water, out of the Nile, out of the canals that go along the Nile that, that, that watered the, uh, the, the, fir, the, the land where they were, the, the farmland, out of the ponds, out of the waters, frogs begin to rise up and crawl out. You guys are quiet. Now, not just one or two, not just a dozen, not just a couple of dozen, not just a couple of hundred, not even a couple of thousand, or even a few 10,000 frogs, not even a hundred thousand, or a couple of hundred thousand but millions of frogs. Now think about that for just a minute. Imagine, imagine standing on the bank of the river and all of a sudden the water is roiling with, how many seen carp in the water? All right, you know how they are? You ever been to those amusement parks and there's water out there and you can feed them and all of a sudden all the, car, all the fish come up to the top and they, you know what I'm saying? All right, imagine that with frogs. All right, finally got somebody. Finally got a reaction. All right. The water roiling with frogs, just one on top of the other, all this stuff, and they rise to the top. And then, like an army, they begin to march out of the water. This one? All right. Out of the army, out, 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 like an army, they begin to march out of the water. Can you imagine them frogs just, right? They co a couple of months ago, we were here on a Sunday night, I think it was, 
Might have been a Wednesday night. Sunday night, Wednesday night. And it had rained. And when we left this place, as we drove through the parking lot and down the hill, there were frogs. Drive down 20. There were frogs. They were hopping across the road. How many of you have ever seen that happen? You seen them frogs hop across the road, right? After a rainstorm, they all come out. That's nothing compared to what's going on here. There are millions of frogs that have come out of the bodies of water. And they, it says they covered the land. Covered the land. Everywhere you stepped, you stepped on a frog. Everywhere you sat, you sat on a frog. You pull your sheet back, because it says they're in the bedrooms and in the bed. You pull your sheet back to get in bed, and there's just not one frog. Your bed is filled with frogs. Pharaoh goes to the, he goes to the shower and pulls the shower curtain back. Now, work with me, man. I know he didn't have a shower, but come on. Right? And the tub is full of frogs. They go to the cabinet to pull off a bowl to make bread, and there's frogs in it. You open the oven to put the pizza in, there's frogs in there. Everywhere there was frogs. All right. How many believe the Bible? All right. You believe the Bible? You believe that, well, this is what the Bible tells us. There's frogs everywhere. Frogs everywhere. So what kind of quality of life is happening in Egypt right now? Not much, is there? All right. So Pharaoh does what Pharaoh's going to do. He's going to call his religious leaders. He's going to call his magicians, those guys that a little bit later, they're going to throw down their rods and they're going to turn into snakes. We know that, that part of the story. Well, look at this one, verse 7. But the magicians did the same by their secret arts and made frogs come up on the land of Egypt. Yeah, some of you already got that, right? I heard the laugh. Some of you already figured this out. Now, it doesn't say, the word doesn't say why they're there and what they were attempting to do. Now, they could have been this. They could have... Because these are the religious leaders, right? They're the, 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 these guys that are called magicians, they are the ones who lead the worship of the pantheon of gods that are in Egypt. All right? Including Pharaoh himself because he's believed to be a god. All right? The son of the sun god, son of Ra is what Pharaoh actually, where it comes from. Pharaoh Ra all right, is the, the original. All right, we've, anyway, you know. So, they're coming into Pharaoh. You know, it's job security. Well, one of two things are going on here. One is job security. They're coming up and saying, hey, Pharaoh, don't worry. Moses, he can bring frogs. We can bring frogs too. Watch this. Or, maybe they tried to get rid of the frogs, and it didn't work. Either way, what happens is now there are more frogs. All right, so when you pull back your sheet and there were 10 frogs on your bed, now there's 20. You pull the bowl off the cabinet and there were two frogs in the bowl, well, and now there's four or five. More, more frogs. So now... Think about it. It's just not that the ground is covered with frogs, but now the frogs are covered with frogs. Frogs are everywhere. They're everywhere. Right, there's, there's two things I want you to remember from today. Well, three, because you're going to remember. The, I, don't have to, I don't have to impress upon the frogs because you're going to remember frogs. The next time you see a frog, you're going to remember this story. I guarantee you. The next time you see a frog, the first thing is this. The magicians, Pharaoh evidently called these guys. These guys just didn't show up. Either they were there or whatever. All right. and it, 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 they could have been there. They could have been in Pharaoh's court just waiting around when Moses comes in. All right. But you have to recall, right, in the hierarchy of the day, in the royal court, 
You didn't speak unless you knew the protocol, unless you were spoken to. All right? Remember, Moses, he walked into Pharaoh because he knew how to get in there. Remember, he had been raised in Pharaoh's house 80 years prior to this. So he knew he was raised up understanding and knowing the protocols of government. That's why he could walk into Pharaoh's court. He knew how to get in. He knew how to get in. So he just walks right in, goes to the protocols. But the guys who are there, the magicians, if they're standing there, they're not going to do anything unless Pharaoh says, do something. They're not going to say, hey, Pharaoh, we, just, we got this. You know it doesn't work that way, right? That's kind of like the, the colonel telling the general, hey, man, we got this, man. You just sit down. We'll make the decision. Now, how many of you know that doesn't work very well, right? Because Pharaoh's the man. He's the one in charge. So he evidently has given these guys permission to do something. Pharaoh's trying to fix the problem. He's trying to fix the problem is what's going on. But in doing it, they just kind of mess things up. When you and I, when we get in the middle of trying to fix something in our own strength, in our own abilities, we mess it up. See, what was happening was there was a spiritual battle that was going on. You know, all this part of Exodus, is, it's all about a spiritual battle. It's not about the plagues themselves. It's not really about getting Israel out of Egypt. I mean, that, that's, that's the ultimate goal. But it's a spiritual battle that Yahweh, the Lord God, is showing himself mighty over all of the gods, little g, of Egypt. The, including Pharaoh himself, who was worshipped as a god. It's a spiritual battle. So these guys stand up to fight a spiritual battle in their own strength, with their own ability, with their own talents. And they mess it up. You know what? That's what happens in your life. And mine. When we're facing something that, you know, it's, we think we know what to do. We've got this idea. Here it is. Man, I'm faced with this decision. I prayed. I, somebody, I prayed for you. Somebody out there was, was struggling with something. All right. That, that decision thing was weighing weight heavily, we, heavily on me when we prayed. So God is already, God get, I, I felt it. So hang on to it. Grab it. God's giving the answer. But often we look at a decision we need to make, we look at this, we, we've got to fix this problem, we've got to fix this issue, we're going to fix this relationship, whatever it may be, and we do it out of our own strength. Well, I know that. I read a book once. Right? I mean, everybody's a doctor now because we go to WebMD, right? And we diagnose ourselves so we know everything. Right? Or we go to Lawyers or Us and we don't need you guys anymore. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Uh, that's what we, we think. We think we got a little bit of knowledge and we take that little bit of knowledge and we misapply it. Well, this is kind of like this, so it must be the same. So I did okay here, so let me try this, right? You know, I did okay on that, you know, that, that Nintendo driving game. So, yeah, put me behind it. I can drive that. I can buy that semi, sure. Right? I spent a lot of quarters in the arcade. I can, yeah. Right? Out of our talents and our abilities, we think, we try to apply, and we try to move in areas that you and I are not qualified to do. And I don't mean that in the natural sense. I mean it in the spiritual sense. When there's something going on in our life that we really need to let God take care of it and ask God for it. God for some guidance. Ask him for some wisdom. Ask him for some help. We just need to stand and let God do it. That's hard for us. It is hard. I didn't say it's hard for you. I said it's hard for us. It's hard for us at times, right, because we're not wired that way. We're wired to do something. Right, wrong, we've got to do something. Everybody go like this. Come on, right? It's hard for us to just sit still and let things happen.
But that's what we tell everybody else to do, right? Sure. You know? If we're giving parenting advice, we tell other parents, hey, just yeah, let your kids figure it out. They can do it until it's our kids. Then we got you know, to help. We got to help them out. It's, this is nothing new. You know, this happened eh, 3,700 years ago. Tried to fix it. Didn't work out too well. All right, verse 8. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron. Let me stop right there for just a minute. Notice he called them. They're no longer in the court. So the Bible doesn't tell us. We were in verse 8 now. Remember, the frogs came in verse 6. In verse 7, they were multiplied. All right. And in verse 8, Pharaoh's going to ask for some subtraction. Right. You didn't know it was a math class, did you? But the, the, we do not know the timeline. It just goes from one verse to the next verse to the next verse. And now, Pharaoh's, he, calls, he calls Moses and Aaron. So Moses and Aaron weren't there. They weren't there. They had already left. They would come back. How long did it take Pharaoh to decide to call Aaron, Moses and Aaron? How long did it take him to decide, I've got to do something? How many times did his wife pull back the sheet... And find frogs in her bed. Right? And she says, you've got to do something. How long did that take? How long did Pharaoh walk from the palace to the throne room squishing frogs every day? How long? How long did his servants pull bowls out to fix him something to eat and had to remove the frogs from the bowls? How long did, how many days was it they had to clean out the ovens before they could bake the bread? We don't know. We don't know. But eventually, something breaks down Pharaoh. Because you've got to remember, Pharaoh... In his eye, well, in the people's eyes, and in his eyes, because he drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> he is the son of Ra. There was this huge ceremony that was taking place, and when the new Pharaoh was, when the, when, when when a Pharaoh was 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 uh, uh, consecrated to the throne, when one dies, when the, when Pharaoh's son would come to the throne, he was consecrated to the throne. There was this law, this big elaborate ceremony, and uh, they believed that the spirit of Ra would in uh, would inhabit Pharaoh when he sat when he sat down, and then when that when when that human body died, that 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 spirit left, and the next person would come. They would consecrate, and then they would. So they believed. They believed that the spirit of the sun god, Ra, rested in him. And he believed that. So he's going to wait as long as he can. I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to give in to Moses, you know. We'll figure this out. We're the mighty, we're the mighty Egyptians. We're the greatest power on the earth. We can figure this out. So it was Pharaoh's pride that kept him from reaching out. I'm going to say that again. Because somebody needs to open your heart and let that sink in. It was Pharaoh's pride that kept him from reaching out. It was his pride. So finally, he gets to that point, whether his wife, you know, pestered him to death, whether his servants came in there, whether his, whether, whether his you know, his, his uh, uh, the counselors or whatever, whether he just got to the part, part, whatever, he gets to the part, he calls Moses. Let's finish this verse. Plead, uh, Pharaoh says, plead with the Lord to take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. Now, I'll deal with the very end first because it won't take very long. See that last part where it says, I will let the people go to sacrifice to the Lord? Uh, that was the second time that Pharaoh lied because he said that after the first plague. He's going to say it eight more times, actually, <laughs> all right, until, uh, or, or seven more times until, until the, the Passover comes, and then he's going to go. Then, of course, then he's going to change his mind. He's going to take off and, and, and go after him because you, you, you either read it or you saw the movie, right? 
All right, so we know, we know how the story ends. We know how the story ends. All right. Plea, Pharaoh, your Brenner sitting on the, on the throne looking at Charlton Heston. Talk to God for me. You're the, one that, you're the one that brought this. Talk to God. Let him take it away. Plead. That's a strong word. In the English, it's strong, but the Hebrew is strong behind it too. He just didn't ask him. It wasn't just the king commanding as he normally would do. There's emotion wrapped up in this. He's at the point of desperation. Now, you know, however he's been driven there by his counselors or by his wife or by his own, you know, tired of stepping on frogs when he got up in the shower in the morning, whatever the case may be, he's been driven to desperation to seek the help of the Lord. How many times in your life and mine do we wait until we're desperate to do that? When you and I, because of the cross, have access to the throne. We can go anytime we want and we wait till everything is crashing around us. You know why? Human nature, 3,700 years ago, nothing has changed. Why? Because we think we can do it on our own. We think we can do it on our own. All right, Moses, you have to do something about it. All right, verse 9. Moses said to Pharaoh, be pleased to command me when I am to plead for you and your servants and for your people that the frogs be cut off from you and your houses and only be left in the Nile. All right, so it basically says, this, this first part, be pleased to command me. This phrasing is kind of strange for the English, for, for us as English speakers, I put it that way. It's not, really, it's not strange to the English because they still live in a, in a kind of a monarchy, so they still honor... The queen. We've lost. We, don't, we, we, we haven't lost it, but we, just, we don't understand some of those things. That's why, in all honesty, that's why it's difficult for us as Americans to understand some of the, 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 the imagery in the Old Testament and the New Testament for that matter. We speak, we use the term kingdom of God, but in our mind... We get a vote. No. That's not how a kingdom works. You did read history, right? Right? You know, and those guys that banned 52 guys come together and write that document, you know, Thomas Jefferson, and right? We're in the course of human events, right? right? You know, we threw that, we threw that off because we did not have a voice. But see, in the kingdom of God, the king speaks and we obey. That's really quiet, I know. There's no place for you and me to vote in the kingdom of God. The king speaks and we obey. Now, we can choose to be disobedient. The vote you have is whether you want to participate or not. You can vote for disobedience or obedience. It's up to you. But if the king says something, that's the way it's going to be. So Moses is sitting there. Remember, Moses was raised in Pharaoh's house. Not this guy, another one. Right, 80 years prior to this. He was raised in there. He understood all of that. He understands. Uh, Lotus, he is honoring He's honoring someone, listen to this, he's honoring someone he doesn't agree with. He's honoring someone that he does not agree with. But he's honoring that position. He's honoring that king. Even though he doesn't agree with him, he's honoring him. Be pleased to command me. At your pleasure, Command me. Now at this time, you remember, the Pharaoh has, Pharaoh, somebody grab this quickly so I can move on. Somebody needs this, and that's why we're still here. Sorry. The, 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 the 
the ball, Pharaoh has put the ball into Moses' court. Hey, talk to God and get rid of this stuff. So all Moses has got to say is, okay. Right? But he, lets, he, he hands it back to Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh, all right, it has to do with some spiritual authority here because he's over the kingdom of Egypt. And he said, well, how, what do you want to happen? What do you want to happen in your household? Shh, come on now. What do you want to happen in your household? Moses isn't there saying, I want to say what's going to happen in your household. He's saying, you tell me what you want in your household. What do you want to happen? That's what he's saying. You, you tell me. Tell me when you want God to do this. Now, I've told you before, there are some strange verses in the Bible. This verse isn't really strange, but the context and what, 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 what is going on, this has to be the strangest. Remember what just happened. Moses said, you be pleased to command me. At your pleasure, you tell me when you want me to go to God and pray for you. Verse 10, and he, Pharaoh, said, tomorrow. Some of you hadn't sunk in yet, has it? <laughs> Moses said, be as it that you say so that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. There's no one like Yahweh. No one like Yahweh our Elohim. Right? There's no one like our God. But did you see what happened? Moses says, when do you want, when do you want me to go to God on your behalf? So all the frogs disappear. And Pharaoh says, oh, I don't know. Tomorrow would be good. You know, I've gotten kind of used to sleeping with them in the bed. So, yeah, one more night, you know, uh, yeah, that, that squishy sound they make when you walk on them, you know, as I go home tonight. I want to hear that one more time. Understand, that's really what Pharaoh is saying here. Tomorrow. To which Moses should have said, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? My question to you is, what are you waiting for? Sometimes in our life when we know that things are there, we know we need to lay it down at the altar because we've tried everything and we can't get anything else done. And we need to lay it down. We need to put it in God's hands and let him take care of it. But sometimes we still hold on to it because we like the squishy sound of the frogs when we walk on them. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? God is ready to move now. In that situation that you think is impossible, God is ready to move now. In that decision that, that, that you just don't know what, God is ready to move now. On that doctor's report that you really know, or, the, or that, that uh, doctor's appointment that's coming up and you really know, God is ready to move now. So what are you waiting for? Why do we wait? Why do we wait? Now, remember why Pharaoh waited because, because of the pride that was on the inside of him. Because he was a son of God. I know that may sound strange, but that's really what they believe. You know, he's a son of the sun God. So just take it out. That's what He's walking. He's walking in the authority of a God. But... He rested in that. See, there's a certain amount of, of spiritual authority that's been given to you and been given to me. But you know what? We've got to lay all that down and let God be in control. God has not put you in charge of the earth. Thank God. Yeah, we, we, think, we think things are chaotic today. You know what it would be like if we were in charge? Because I, I, know, I know some of you like it to be 75 degrees all year long. All right? 
Some of you like 80 or 90. Some of you like 30 or 40. You know, we got people who like rain. We got people who like snow. We like people who like the heat, but they like the snow. Not sure how that works, but you know. This world would be in, would be in utter chaos if we were in charge. Do you agree with that? Yes. Well, then you ever wonder why your life looks the way it does? Maybe the wrong person's in charge. Maybe the wrong person's in charge. Today, today, not tomorrow, today is the day to lay it all down. To lay it all down. And here's what we're going to do. I just want you to stand where you are. Everybody stand. I'm going to pray. I'm not going to call you forward. But before, here's what we're going to do. In just a minute, I'm going to have you bow your head. And for 30, 40 seconds, I'm going to let you. It's just going to be silent here unless you're praying out loud. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let you talk to God. I'm going to let you tell him, I've made a mess. All right? You can say, I made a mess of my marriage. I made a mess of my relationship. I made a mess of work. I made a mess of whatever. You, you be, be specific what you made a mess on. Because you know, we have to because we've made so many messes. God doesn't know which one we're talking about. Be specific. I've made a mess. I, I, and lay it at the altar. And then ask God. Ask God to take care of it. Are you tired of dealing with the frogs in your life? Are you tired of dealing with frogs in your life? Now's the day to give it to God. All right? Bow your head. Take 30, 40 seconds. And then I'm going to pray. Father, we admit we, we can do nothing apart from you. We admit that as talented as, as we are, as gifted as we are, as intelligent as we are, Lord, we've just made, we've made a mess. We lay it at your feet today. God, I know in this house, Lord, there are, Issues and decisions and relationships and, and work situations. Health issues. Hopelessness. Not knowing what direction to turn. All these things have been, have been laid out and spoken out today, Lord. I feel my heart. And God, I pray, Lord, that today, not tomorrow, not Tuesday, not next week, not next month, but today... God, that you would speak, that you would move, that they, your children, would see you at work. God, that your peace would rest upon them. And, Lord, that those seeking direction, Lord, would find it. Lord, that situations, Lord, even, even, even right now, even this afternoon, Lord, that they would find out, Lord, that situations are being mended, God, because you are at work. God, may we never say as Pharaoh did, oh, yeah, we're good until tomorrow. God, may we be desperate in our hearts, Lord, and cry out that you move in our lives today, that you move now. Lord, not even this afternoon, but now, God, now. Lord, may we be desperate like Pharaoh was, Lord, when he called out to Moses and asked him to, to intercede on his behalf. May we have that desperation, but Lord, may we not wait. Lord, out of our desperation, Father, when, when things get to the point where we, can't, we can go no further, when we can do nothing else, God, may we out of that desperation cry out to you and believe and expect you to move immediately. And we 
we not wait? May we not wait, Lord. God, I thank you for what you have done, for what you are doing, Lord, because, Lord, I know that you are already moving, already moving on our needs, on our, our, our requests, on our issues. Mending and restoration is taking place, and I thank you for that, God. Father, I pray that as we leave, Lord, this place, may your favor, your blessing rest upon us. May your grace and your mercy rest upon us. And Father, may we always be reminded, Lord, every time we see a frog, God, may we be reminded not to wait. Not to wait, but to cry out now. Father, thank you for all that you have done, what you are doing. Keep us safe in your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.